and today's stream is going to be beginner books on money. Put my blind banging against the wall there. So that's what this is. This one's going to be about. I'll try not to make that make sound. All right, and without further ado. Let's get into it. Gosh, I'm all over the place. I've just finished my flipping half marathon run like 40 minutes ago. So I just had enough time to come home, have a shower, get some food in me. And by food, I mean an apple and this can of Coke because sugar after a run is good. Anyway. Anyway, actually, what order are these supposed to be in? So, I apologise for my disorganisation today. I had not planned this out very well. This. Oh, that's the water there. Cool. Okay. So, book number one is an awesome book. Glare out of here. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This book slaps. This is a updated version. I don't know what year this one is. The most recent one, I think. But it's written by Robert T. Kiyosaki. And he's written a whole bunch of different books, had a bunch of different businesses, etc., etc. It is one of the best books, I think, to begin with. Well, number three. It's number three on this list. One of the best books to start with. It doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what you should be doing as far as your finances or your business goes. I guess this could be more of a business thing as well. But the main thing about this book is that it changes your mindset on money essentially where it comes from how it moves what defines an asset and what defines a liability there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff in here a food for thought really because at the beginning people say your house is your biggest asset you know your car is an asset etc etc but what he does and what he talks about in this book is that he defines an asset as something that puts money in your pocket and a liability is something that takes money out. That makes perfect sense to me. That's a pretty easy definition. I don't know what the official definition is, but that makes a lot of sense. So a house, you know, you still have to pay for bills, your mortgage if you have it, insurance, all of that crap. So it's taking money out of your pocket. It's not bringing anything in. Same with your car. you got to pay maintenance and repair, insurance, license, registration, taking money out of your pocket, not putting any in. So that's what he talks about in this book is that assets are things that put money in your pocket. So it is. it was quite a controversial book when it came out, I think initially because, you know, the stigma was that your house is your biggest asset. I am more inclined to go with his definition is that it's not an asset. It's just another liability that you have to pay for. But he talks about, it's written beautifully as well. So he talks about all of his childhood growing up and his friends and his, um, his rich dad and his poor dad. And he talks about the lessons that they learned, the different lives that they had and how he was stuck in between these two worlds one highly successful and one i guess with a different kind of success right his poor dad encouraged him a lot to go and get a job and to you know have job security and work you know study get a get a, get a job and then climb the corporate ladder and etc cetera, etc cetera. whereas his rich dad told him that he should never work for money again a stigma that people go well that makes no sense but what he goes into into this book is exactly how that makes more sense than doing it any other way, which I think is incredibly interesting. 
And it's one of the reasons why this book has made it to the top three on my list. Now, I've read a few um, different financial books. I've watched a lot of videos, etc., etc. But this was something that just clicked in my brain. It was one of the first books I read. One of the first books that's you know recommended to you by everyone everywhere. And it's such a foundation as far as financial literacy goes is this book provides that baseline for you to then build everything on top of that. And that's what this really is. And especially in this day and age when a financial financial literacy and that financial baseline is so hard to come by in people, especially young people who are then taught by older people. And it obviously just gets passed down generation to generation. I think in order to break that and to truly achieve something different that's the book to start with and then you move on to more specific books and more defining books on exact principles and exact direction i suppose is the word but this one just provides that that level for you to then begin everything else and build everything else on top that foundation now the second book on this list on my list is The Richest Man in Babylon. Get that out of the glare. This book is another fantastic book. This one, when I read it, I didn't actually need to implement anything in this book because I was already doing everything that it spoke about, which I was quite impressed by. I guess it's a little bit of a brag. I don't mean it like that at all. I just was reading it hoping to find something new to grasp hold of and find something new to implement into my finances. But everything that explained in this book, I was already doing, which is something that I thought, okay, well, I'm definitely on the right track then. This book originally was written in separate parables, so short stories set... Uh, oh gosh, I have no idea what year it is. Years and years ago. Set in Babylon, basically. So, a long time ago. And it would speak about different characters in this in, in Babylon. And so, The Richest Man in Babylon. I won't spoil the whole book because it is well worth the read. Richest Man in Babylon would be asked by loads of different people, how do you build your wealth? How did you get to this? You know, I'm over here working my ass off however many hours a day just to scrape by. And he goes, okay, well, these are the rules and the things that everyone should do in order to become financially successful. So he talks about paying yourself first, which essentially boils down to you have to keep 10% of everything that you earn. Now, whether that's, now he says to save that up and then invest that after a certain amount of time once you've got a little bit there, but when your paycheck comes in, 10%, minimum, he says, minimum 10%, that's yours. You don't spend that, you don't, that stays with you. And then once you build that up enough, then you go and put it into investments that are then gonna make you more money, into assets that will put money into your pocket. That was one of the big things. And there were a few other bits and pieces here about um, working and um, making your money compound and make your money work for you. So then obviously like investing in stocks is a good example because then that money is going to you know, sit around in the stocks and that company is going to pay you and they're going to use your money to improve the business, etc., etc. So... There are quite a few um, rules, I guess, in this book that explain how to manage your money and to make your money work for you. It's Once again, it's another baseline book, so it doesn't go into anything specific, obviously, because they're parables, they're just fictional stories. But it's interesting because... It talks about saving and investing and all these different things. And it's so relevant now 
as it was back when it was first written. So it's just, I mean, I can't even really put it into words. I'm still trying to figure out the words myself, if I'm honest. It's such a good book. A lot of people say it's hard to read. It's not that hard to read. There is a few thys and theys and thous and in there, but it's, you can, just by context, you can figure out what each thou and thy mean. He talks about slavery in there and all sorts of different bits and pieces. But it is, it is a good book, especially to read after Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because then it just builds on top of that foundation. You have your foundation of how money works and what to do with it. And then on top of that, you have increments of more specifically how that money is going to work and what you should be doing with it. It's, it's a fantastic book. I read this thing in like two days because it was just fascinating. What on earth? Dad carrying a chair out to the street. Oh, well, I don't know. It's a great book. That's why I got number two. And I recommend everyone read this. It's fantastic. It just gives you a little bit more information about what you should be doing with your money instead of spending it on dumb stuff. And that brings us to number one book. This is going to be a quick stream. I apologize. Or if you like a quick stream, you're welcome. And that's, of course, going to be The Barefoot Investor. Now, I go into this book incredibly deeply. I don't know if the grammar with that sentence is adequate, but I go into this book a lot in a previous video that I did. So if you want to go and check that out, it'll be called The Barefoot Investor, probably. It only would have been a couple of weeks ago, I think. So this book is the exact stuff that you should be doing to make your finances better. This one is about setting up your bank accounts and your superannuation. You bought, how are you? Good to hear from you again. This book is specifically how to set up your bank accounts, what you should call them, how much money you should be putting in there, what they're all for, what bank it's with, all of that jazz. So, and that's why this one's number one is because with the foundation of the two previous books, you have the mindset to go, all right, I know a little bit about what's going on. I'm going to push myself to sort everything out. <laughs> oh, mate, you're too good to me. You're too good to me. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do that, really. The day that I actually start making good content and I have more time to put more effort into this stuff, that's that'll be the day. 34 months straight. That's crazy. Thank you, mate. Seriously, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Waiting so long to do that. There you go. 36 months is crazy. You got the S badge as well. Jeez. Never thought I'd see someone in my stream with that. That's insane. Thanks, mate. Sorry you missed the last two streams. Hey, don't even stress. Don't even stress. I'm still trying to find my groove again, you know. I've been I'm coming out of retirement, so I've got to get back into it. Anyway, number one book is, yeah, this one. Goes into exactly what you should be doing, the specifics. So with the foundation of the other two books, plus this after you've read those two, and then once you implement everything, you feel like you're a thousand miles ahead. And that's exactly how I felt after I did everything. I actually read these in a completely different order to what I've just talked about, but the point still stands. It's still incredibly good. And it's great to, to read these books so that you can, you know, by the time you're 30, you're not scraping around the bottom of the barrel for $2 coins in your in the back of your car. And that's what I want. I want to be able to 
share the things that I've learned with you guys so that you can skip all of the guff and all of the time spent trying to figure all this crap out and get straight to the part where you get better. That's the goal. Provide value. That's why I do this. So yeah, those are the top three books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Richest Man in Babylon, and Barefoot Investor. In that order. I would read them in that order. But of course you don't have to if you have one or other ones. There you go.